Dear students, in this episode, we plan to discuss Kelvin cycle. First of all, we must know why it is important for us to know about Kelvin cycle. In previous episodes, we have discussed about photosynthesis, different aspects of photosynthesis and we know photosynthesis helps us in getting rid of carbon dioxide in the environment and getting oxygen from it. Is it the only purpose of photosynthesis? We had been telling about it that by the process of photosynthesis, plants are able to make their food and release oxygen in the environment. So far, we have concentrated on understanding of how oxygen is produced in the process of photosynthesis. Now, it is equally important for us to know how food is synthesized in the plant by the process of photosynthesis and that is a point where we need to understand Kelvin cycle. Kelvin cycle will explain that what are the steps which are taking place inside the plant tissue so that carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight are producing food in the form of starch or sucrose or glucose which is being stored by the plant for their own use so use the same food in form of using the fruits of the tree. We can understand details of Kelvin cycle from the slide. First of all, it is a cyclical activity. Unless it was cyclical activity, the purpose could not be served. It has three major steps, carboxylation, reduction and regeneration. And without all the three steps taking place, the cycle cannot be completed and cycle cannot be recycled. The cycle should continue means it should be recycled again and again. It begins for the sake of understanding it begins with carboxylation. The ribulose 1, 5 by phosphate it will undergo carboxylation. Carboxylation is the main step in Kelvin cycle. What happens in this step? It will make use of carbon dioxide which is taken for photosynthesis, also water and in the presence of enzyme, it will convert ribulose 1,5 biphosphate to 3 phosphoglycerate. This was carboxylation use of carbon dioxide in Kelvin cycle. Now, this 3 phosphoglycerate at the cost of consumption of any DPH which was product of light reaction and also at the cost of ATP which was also the product of light reaction. These two are utilized in the second step called reduction where 3-phosphoglycerate is converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. I may repeat this step in a different way to make you understand better. Carboxylation has taken place and now reduction will take place. For that we need to use, I mean the plant needs to use any DPH and ATP which was the product of light reaction and using that it will convert 3-phosphoglycerate to glyceraldehyde and 3-phosphate and the process ATP is converted to ADP and of course phosphate molecule. Please remember, we are the plants are doing photosynthesis to get energy as ATP to give out oxygen and also to make food. The energy such produced is not fully used for all the other processes in the plant. Part of ATP is also used to complete the process of photosynthesis to produce starch and glucose. So, whatever energy is produced that is partly utilized by plant itself for this particular process. So, we have reached up to the point the formation of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate after the process of reduction. Now, next step is very important. By series of steps, of course, starch is produced and sucrose is produced. This is a food for the plant. 
the plant will use it as a food and of course we will also use but now the next step called regeneration is more important than the previous step unless a regeneration takes place the cycle will not continue cycle will stop with the production of glucose and starch and full stop how about the next the next cycle has to continue so that food is continuously produced by the process of photosynthesis so in this regeneration the plant will still use more atp which will be converted to adp and the end result will be ribulose 15 by phosphate with which the calvin cycle began so beginning is important but replacement is also important if cycle begins at this point undergoes carboxylation then reduction then regeneration then only it reaches to the first initial point again otherwise cycle can don't continue that is one thing to understand second thing to understand what we are producing the plant is producing in the form of atp is partly utilized plant is producing nadph partly utilized and that is converted to adp normally adp is converted to atp because we need energy the plant needs energy any living body needs energy but here part of that atp which was produced as energy is self utilized to complete the cycle in order to have food the starch and the glucose so that is the purpose the calvin cycle is serving in the plant's body and this is called biosynthetic pathway because plant is producing biosynthetic material that is glucose or sucrose or starch which is stored in the plant for long time and can be used by other organisms as well i am sure this particular slide makes it very clear how this process is happening let me draw your attention on certain points now you can see any dph when used for calvin cycle is converted to nadp like atp to adp adenosine triphosphate converted to adenosine diphosphate that means plant has to give energy more to convert adp to atp so this is a complex process which will again run within the plant similarly you can see three atp consumed are giving out three adp in the regeneration process of course the plant had to shell out energy but coming to the initial point of calvin cycle is also important so cycle goes on so okay this also happened so this is complex shuffling this complex shuffling completes a cycle in this 15 carbons are produced at the initial point and 15 at the point where starch was synthesized and the enzyme utilized was in carboxylation ribosco enzyme so enzyme utilization is only at the carboxylation and of course other processes are going on as explained in the cycle with this we complete calvin cycle which is biosynthetic pathway or biosynthetic cycle it is named calvin after the name of the person who described it in detail we have discussed calvin cycle and three important steps of calvin cycle being carboxylation reduction and regeneration now i want to emphasize on the point using enzyme at carboxylation where carbon dioxide is fixed and that is ribosco enzyme now ribosco is the enzyme which has affinity for oxygen as well as for carbon dioxide in calvin cycle we have shown its affinity with carbon dioxide because it is being used in carboxylation and fixing carbon dioxide and also i would like to remind you students that calvin cycle takes place in c3 plants as well as c4 plants but there is some difference between c3 and c4 plants that we will understand in the next slide difference between c3 and c4 plants is photorespiration photorespiration takes place only in c3 plants what happens in this as i told you while explaining calvin cycle that the enzyme ribosco at the level of carboxylation it has equal affinity for oxygen and carbon dioxide and when carbon dioxide is more naturally it is working on carbon dioxide but suppose 
oxygen is available then if it is getting linked to oxygen then photorespiration will begin and what will happen and that can begin only in C3 plants not in C4 plants. So there won't be any synthesis of ATP, no synthesis of any DPH that means product of light reaction will not happen. There is no synthesis of sugars that means food is not prepared by the plant nor is stored and instead of oxygen carbon dioxide is released utilizing ATP. So whatever ATP is present in the plant that is also being used to produce carbon dioxide which we do not require, we require oxygen. So this is considered a wasteful process. It can take place in C3 under certain circumstances but whenever it is taking place it is a wasteful process and it does not take place in C4 plants and that is why C4 plants are considered more stable. They can survive in slightly higher temperatures or variable temperatures and carry on photosynthesis well and also Kelvin cycle well so that they are though using ATP but also producing oxygen and also continuing with the Kelvin cycle to produce sugar and starch as their food material. Now in C3 plants as I am discussing the photorespiration when will it take place and how it will take place? Only when the proportion between availability of oxygen and availability of carbon dioxide is such that Rubisco enzyme at the level of carboxylation gets attached to oxygen in place of carbon dioxide. And the moment that happens carboxylation will not take place that means I am going to the previous slide to make you understand this. Carboxylation the Rubisco enzyme carbon dioxide is being used in this process of Kelvin cycle. Suppose carbon dioxide was not used, suppose it was photorespiration then in place of CO2 there will be O2. Hence carboxylation cannot take place. Now the total cycle will change, all the steps will change and instead of producing food it will not produce food, instead of producing oxygen it will produce carbon dioxide and it will consume ATP to produce carbon dioxide. That means neither carboxylation will take place nor reduction will take place and regeneration will also not take place and Kelvin cycle will not be able to serve the purpose for what it is taking place inside the plant. So photorespiration which is a wasteful process sometimes takes place in the situation where the proportion between oxygen and carbon dioxide is such that this particular enzyme, the important enzyme, the most abundant enzyme in the plant kingdom, the Rubisco gets fixed with oxygen in place of carbon dioxide. So students we have discussed about Kelvin cycle, its utility and also photorespiration and we have discussed the conditions in which these particular cycles take place. We have understood the utility of Kelvin cycle in the plant. Children, it is time for you to appreciate the efforts made by plants for us and how complicated the system is and how complicated the reactions taking place within the plant body to give us oxygen and of course food in addition to many other things which we get from the plant. Also try to imagine if any step is disturbed by any of the factors or man-made factors or natural factors that means this cyclical activity will be affected and unless cycle is completed neither we can get oxygen properly nor we can get food properly nor plant can get ATP. Also one more point which is made clear from this discussion that whatever energy is produced by plant at least half of it is utilized in making Kelvin cycle possible. With this, we come to the end of this session. Thank you.